Hey everyone, my name is Lewis and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about the most common issues and mistakes that I've seen in my two years as a programming bootcamp instructor. So as usual, I'll start this video off with a little bit of background. From 2015 to 2019, I worked at Google where I left as a senior software engineer on a machine learning and security team for internal research. After that, I became a programming bootcamp instructor where I taught first in Istanbul and then later in Moscow teaching both students who had absolutely no previous programming experience to those who you know, were pretty far in their careers. Maybe they've already worked at a company for a few years. Uh, they already have experience in the workplace as a programmer. And for that reason, I think and hope that this YouTube channel can offer a little bit of different insight because mostly I won't be talking about my personal experience or career as a programmer, but rather aggregating and reflecting on the experiences of hundreds of students that I've seen you know, go from zero to being a junior programmer and having actually worked with some of those students myself. So one aggregation of that is what I'm going to talk about in today's video, and that is the biggest mistake, in my opinion, that students of programming make, right? And that biggest mistake is that students watch too many videos, okay? And it's like, yeah, haha, okay, I know, it's funny. This guy is telling me they watch too many videos and, you know, I'm watching a video about it, right? But actually, this video is not teaching you programming itself, right? It's more about introspecting the process of learning programming, or I suppose the word for this is meta-learning, right? So, you know, why is this a problem, right? And before I answer that question, I'm going to delve into an analogy, okay? And one of the biggest things that I want viewers to take away from this video is that programming is no different from any other skill in its learning process. So that analogy, for example, we can extend to playing piano or playing football, right? So let's say if you're playing football and you want to learn to dribble the ball, Will you get good at dribbling the ball watching a video or watching five hours of videos? No, you have to actually dribble the ball. Same with piano. Can watching videos make you good at piano? And the answer is, you know, I think pretty obviously no, right? Like maybe it can help you, but you have to actually play the piano. But for some reason, students think that in programming, maybe because of the availability of information or, you know, maybe because they don't, you know, they're already on their computers, they tend to watch so many videos about programming and the ratio is completely off. The amount of time that they spend programming versus the amount of time that they're watching videos. So, you know, I've talked a little bit about this mistake, but I'm going to explain more about my experience and, you know, some nuances about it. So let's talk about, you know, what have I seen happen and, you know, my theory of why it happens, okay? It's like, what have I seen happen? I'm, I must be pretty traumatized, right? Like this guy's literally going to make, I don't know how long this video will be, 10, 15 minutes to talk about how students spend too much time watching videos. Well, I'll tell you that in these boot camps, if you're not familiar with them, students are usually on a pretty intense schedule. So it, it differs by the boot camp, but let's take, for example, the one in Moscow. In Moscow, students arrive at 9 a.m., they have a lecture for a few hours, let's say until 11 or 12, and they have the remaining six or seven hours until 6 p.m. to work on certain exercises, right? But what I've seen happen is that students finish the lecture and then they're tasked to work on the exercise. And naturally, when we work on any exercise, you know, for anything we're studying, we get stuck on something, right? There's something we don't know. And that part is okay. But what happens is that students' first response is, is often to go re-watch the whole lecture video or re-watch another video on the same topic on YouTube, which is not inherently bad, but it's more about how you do it, right? Because many of these students, of the six, seven hours they have to spend on problems, I've seen students literally spend four to five hours of those video, uh, four to five hours of that time watching videos, new videos or re-watching old videos. And what happens as a consequence is that they don't finish the problems, which means they don't understand the concept. And in an intense schedule like a boot camp, they're introduced to a new concept the next day, you know, which often builds on the old concept, and they completely fall behind. So it's actually very important to kind of work uh, not hard, but smart, 
basically, right? Like to use videos in the correct role in the learning process. So let me talk a little bit about why this happens, right? And the reason this happens is because videos make you feel like you understand. And this is a really important thing to distinguish. They make you feel like you understand, but you don't actually understand. In the same way that if I watch a video of someone dribbling a ball or playing a video game, the result might be completely different from when I actually do it. And I will actually tell you that the most common thing that students say to me in general, you know, I meet with my students, they tell me this, they tell me, I understand in the lectures, but when I actually try to program, I can't do it, right? And that's normal, by the way, that's completely normal. But the point of this video is to say, to solve that problem of understanding and not doing it, the solution is not to watch more videos, but the solution is, you know, to spend more time on solving the problem. And I'll talk more about this later. But what I want to emphasize is that this happens because it feels good to watch videos. Because this is a form of passive learning rather than active learning. In the same way that when we try to learn a language, you know, maybe we'll watch TV. You know, it feels good to watch TV. Maybe we understand it. But that doesn't mean that we can speak the language well, right? You're like, I understood the TV show, but when I try to actually speak, speak the language, it's complete shit. Right. And so that type of contrast, again, applies to programming because programming is very similar to many other skills. So I mentioned a little bit about why it's so bad, you know, in terms of sucking up time and not only in a boot camp context, but I also want to talk about for those studying at home that, you know, it's important to solve problems rather than continue watching videos. Right. And if you're self studying programming, you know, which I've heard lots of people try to do. I think while in boot camp, the resource you have that's limited is time, I would say if you're self studying, the resource you have that's limited is discipline, right? That is like, what's going to come first? You quitting the process of trying to self studying programming, or you know, you successfully solving problems to give you motivation to keep going, right? So even then, you know, I'll talk about uh, at the very end how videos should be used. I think it's still applicable even in a self-study context. So there's one other topic I want to talk about, which is basically another reason why videos are bad. And, you know, I know I've spent a lot of time basically shitting on videos. And in a little bit, I'll talk about how videos should be used because I do think videos are good in a certain role. But there's one other reason, in my opinion, as an instructor, and also as someone who's, you know, worked at multiple companies and had a career as a programmer, that watching too many videos is bad. And that reason is that as you get further on in your career, you cannot rely on videos for information. What I mean by that is either on very advanced topics or on specific frameworks or, you know, on specific tools in your company, there's not going to be videos to watch. And if you say to yourself, like, oh, I learn better by watching from videos. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you learn better, but at a certain point, you're going to have no choice and you need to develop this skill of learning to read, right? And so what I'm saying, you know, in the learning path, it's better to get started early learning to read than later. I mean, learning to read programming documentation and learning to learn things from reading, right? Actually, in programming, there's a very common phrase or, you know, I should say an abbreviation called RTFM, and it stands for read the fucking manual, right? And I think the fact that this phrase exists essentially reflects programmers' emphasis on written documentation, right? Because when you go to a new company, uh, hopefully your coworkers will have documented the code base or, you know, documented certain parts, but it's very unlikely that, you know, someone has put a webcam in front of them and made a nice video explaining to you how to get oriented at this company, right? You're going to have to rely on reading code, reading documentation, and reading examples, okay? So the other reason that I really dislike this dependence on videos from a teaching perspective is that you are going to need to learn to read eventually. It's an absolutely crucial skill to understand programming concepts from reading. And at a certain point, you know, let's take you know, just in your career, you're going to work with random frameworks, right? And those frameworks probably are not going to have, you know, some 500k subscriber YouTube channel doing a tutorial on it, right? So now let's, let's go to the last part. Let's give videos some credit, right? How should videos be used? 
okay? And I know I've been really harsh to videos, you know, this whole video, and I want to say that actually videos are a great way to learn as an introduction, right? So in my opinion, if I have to summarize, I think that videos should be used to introduce a concept, right? They're great. There's a lot of videos on the internet that are good for this type of thing. And, you know, you can watch these videos maybe the first time to understand a for loop, to understand an if condition. But after that, videos can still be watched, but I'm going to explain how, okay? And how I think that videos or any type of learning material should be used in an active skill like programming, you know, this is how we type when we program, is to try the task when you get stuck on something, like say the task is for a fundamental concept like for loops or if conditions. When you get stuck, you try, then you go back to a certain part of the video you watch, and maybe you compare their example to theirs, right? And you go back and forth, back and forth, right? But you don't watch a video for one to two hours and then return to the problem, right? I'm saying that you have to kind of intersperse the concepts uh, in maybe a temporally close manner, right? So another analogy, like this video is full of analogies because again, I truly believe that programming is similar to so many other skills that we learn in our lives, but people just aren't aware of it, right? So another analogy would be, at least for me, when you learned math in high school or middle school, you have a chapter that teaches a small concept, something like this, right? At the end of the chapter, you have some problems and your teacher assigns you some problems, like do number three, do number seven, right? And when you do that problem, you try it and you remember that there was an example of something similar in the, in the part of the math book that explains it, right? So you flip back to that section, look at the example problem, and then you look back to your problem. And you know, you're like, okay, maybe still not the first time, but you're like reading, really trying to understand the example and then looking at your problem, going back and forth, back and forth. And that's exactly what I'm advocating because that is how, in my experience, I've seen the most successful students learn programming, is that they go and they put the context next to each other and try to apply what they learned and then look at the problem again. And those who don't succeed are those who look at the problem, spend three hours watching videos, and then look at the problem again, right? Again, it's natural to get stuck. That's a totally natural part of the learning process. What I'm simply advocating is to use videos more cleverly within this process. Because to me, learning something, especially learning something quickly in a boot camp, is not so much about, you know, being a genius or anything like that, but it's about really learning efficiently because you have limited time. And whether or not you're in a boot camp is always better, in my opinion, to try to introspect the learning process and learn more efficiently. Okay. So that being said, again, I don't know you, I don't know your life, I don't know how you've been using videos, I don't even know if you're a student or already an experienced programmer, but my hope is that at least I made you think a little bit about the role of videos. And again, I want to emphasize, I like videos. I think there's amazing content out there. I think there's also amazing written content. And I think that, you know, there's definitely a space for videos, you know, you don't feel like programming, you know, you just had a day of work, you want to turn on YouTube and watch something and like kind of passively learn, right. But in the end, I want to emphasize that programming is an active skill, right. And all I ask is that if you are studying programming, or you are in a boot camp, to think critically, after watching this video about the ratio of the amount of time that you spend videos watching videos and the amount of time that you spend trying to actually solve problems. And again, bringing in the analogy of things like football, piano, video games, chess, you know, any type of skill, it doesn't matter, right? Doing is the most important things in this. Doing is the most important thing in any of these skills. And so I really want to reiterate that, you know, please, Try to spend as much time as you can doing problems, actually doing the act of programming rather than absorbing knowledge passively. If you've already you know, done your first round watching some introductory videos. So with that, thank you for your time and leave your comments below whether you love videos, whether you hate videos, or you know whether you've had a good or bad experience using videos to learn programming.